Welcome to Tea Time on Plus TV Africa, where we bring you the biggest entertainment stories. My name is Elsie Godwin, and I have my co anchors with me, Ife Omai and Ife Oluwa Oshunke. Hello. What's up? How are you doing? How are you doing? Yeah. Yo, yo, yo. Back mm. like we never left. <laughs> okay, so a beauty queen, Hasha Mokaji, has returned to the United Kingdom from overseas charity work to continue her career as a doctor amid the COVID-19 pandemic. She had planned to hang up her stethoscope and focus on humanitarian work until August this year, but as the coronavirus situation worsened um, back home in the UK, Mogaji was getting messages from former colleagues at her old hospital telling her how, the, how hard the situation was for them. She told CNN that it felt wrong to be wearing her Miss England crown, even for humanitarian work, while people around the world were dying from coronavirus and her colleagues were working so hard. I mean, it's, I think it's one of those things where, because I have friends that are in medical, but I don't see that, I guess you can call it passion. And I, I think this is when they say passion really drives, you know, what you do and blah, blah, blah. Because passion is the only reason why you want to go back into the front line. Like, oh, this is not a virus that is malaria that just needs to treat people and they'll get better. Like, there's a chance, a high chance that, yeah, she, that, could, be infected, that she could be infected. Yeah. So it's a, it's a lot of sacrifice. Um, and it's good to see that we have people that are that selfless and stuff. So I wish them the best. I mean, we, I'm sure, of all places, England needs the, the assistance. I just hope that she can really be careful. I'm a bit worried about that, but I hope she can be careful. And I, I, I hope that people who are also trying to go into medical, um, the medical field can also begin to question whether or not they have that type of, um, you know, drive for it. Because I don't think you should be if you don't have that, because then it, it's, it makes a difference. Mm -hmm. So um, kudos to her, definitely. I think this is very commendable, considering the fact that um a, a lot of ladies will give anything to have that crown on their head and um, she's giving that up to go back to helping people. I think that is really commendable and a lot of people should really emulate that because you see a lot of people that go for fame and glamour aside to humanitarian stuff because mm. um, putting other people into consideration is very, very commendable if you ask me. So she's doing this, I think um, it's, a, it's a big deal and it's a big win for her. She just won my respect a lot. And I think um, the fact that she ha she's at high risk of getting the virus as well is also very scary. She's gonna be quarantined for 14 days before she starts work. And um, right. in the UK already, about more than 5,000 deaths has been recorded. So I think that is going to be very scary for her, but she's still doing it anyway. So kudos to her and I wish her the best. I think this um, also helps to speak on the misconceptions that comes with um, beauty, queen. beauty, beauty queen. queen. So most people would look at the glam, the beauty, just the surface, they don't yeah. understand the human Interior work that goes into be doing that job. So um, we're all interested to see who wears the crown based on who is beautiful on mm. stage. We, we, maybe who answers some very intelligent question, the sneaking once in a while. But we do not follow up to realize the amount of work that goes into yeah, wearing that crown. And for her to actually now do this is now a step further for you to understand because she she wasn't just wearing the crown and sitting. She has a lot of humanitarian work from different parts of Africa, India, and all that. But she she said she decided to choose to say this is more important at this time so kudos to her and uh, I, I want to say thank you for um, reinforcing that um, knowledge that um, being a beauty queen is not just about the crown and just beauty it's much more right. so yeah that's just it for me um, I, I, I saw although on Twitter the uh, some two negatives that I saw coming from this was that she's not the only person that has been doing this that there's a lot of people who are going back into the medical field even in Nigeria we have um, the government has called a lot of people to come back. Um, the second thing was that in her interview with um, CNN, she mentioned Africa, Turkey, India. And people kept saying that Africa is not a country, especially when you pair it up like that. You can say, if she said Africa, Asia, Europe, that makes more sense. So um, there's those two backlashes. But I I'm sure that she means well with that. It's just one of those things that people would pick on. So obviously being careful 
with Obviously, how you sleep on that. Um, every good stuff was still being met with some negative comments as well. So, um, of course, people would talk, some people would have their reservations about this, that, okay, maybe she's just doing this for clout, because I saw something like that too, like, yeah. oh, she's just trying to increase her fame and oh, let wow. people talk about her. So I saw that as well, but I think we should just put all that she aside. She can and just increase her fame by just sharing... Um, hand sanitizers and all that mm -hmm. and taking pictures. I need mm -hmm. to make the news. She's Miss England for mm -hmm. crying out loud. She doesn't have to do extra to make mm -hmm. the news. But anyway, like we all said already, kudos to her. And um, um, I wish she doesn't get the virus as well. Let's go on a very quick break. But when we come back, we'll have more to discuss. Welcome to Tea Time on Plus TV Africa, where we bring you the biggest entertainment stories and, of course, analyze them for you. You can have both parents and still end up as a useless child. I see them every day. <laughs> Most times, I worry more about where I'm coming from mm -hmm. and where I am now, wow. and that determines my next step. Why are you sounding like Ali Alibaba? Right now? Oh, are you? And plus TV Africa, we're feeling good. No time to die, everybody feeling all right. Still buy. Sometimes I look myself minimal are you? Mm. Apala music is for mature-minded people. That got DM sometimes from Malawi like. This is still tea time on Plus TV Africa. Alicia Keys is grateful for friendship with her father after years of resentment. Keys was raised by her mother and um, for years, the singer resented her dad. She said their relationship got better after a conversation with her friend who reminded her um, she can't keep asking him for things he's not going to do, thereby getting herself or setting herself up for disappointment. She says, and I quote, that changed so much for me and I was able to start a relationship with him in a new way based on knowing who he is as a person and accepting who he is as a person. When I started to do that, we started to be able to connect and I felt good, end of quote. It's something about um, father-daughter relationship that um, you really can't take away and uh, I know what she feels right now, the joy that comes with knowing that the first man in your life has become your friend once again. And um, I like when she came to the, like, it was an epiphany for her when she realized that, look, if, I'm, if I keep asking this guy for things that I know he wouldn't do, then it's going to just be me getting disappointed all the time. So it's just better to start off a friendship, and which is how most great relationships start anyway. It starts with friendship. So being friends with your dad and then... Um, this feeling she's, she's feeling right now is quite understandable because she's quite elated that um, she's back in connection with her father. And I'm grateful for that because, um, you know, aside, like, let's put spirituality into that as well. There's a blessing that comes with being friends with your dad and um, father-daughter relationship or father and son relationship and their blessings as well. So shout out to Alicia Keys and her dad. Um, this story, it confused me mm -hmm. a, a tad bit because... Later. Um, the idea that, okay, I, let me just start with the forefoot where I would say this only works because she's an adult and she actually doesn't need a father. Mm. Um, it's impossible to redefine the father relationship when you need fathering. Like I don't need a friend when I'm 16 mm. or when I'm 12 or mm. when I'm four. Sure. So that advice from the friend saying that, oh, why are you always testing your support for disappointments? Like it's, I, I, I really disagree with that. I think you're supposed to. Um, expect that you get fatherly love from your father because she's older like I mentioned maybe that's why she can then choose to see things otherwise and say you know what because it's an insult to the father it's like saying well, you know what since you're really crap at this let me not just ask you to be mm -hmm. a father anymore let me just see you as a friend and see what's up so if she has any fatherly advice she's not going to be going to her father but if she wants to talk with the friend then she would i mean if that works for her and she's getting happiness from that that's absolutely fine but uh it's not I, I don't say that's one of the stories that i can start to like say people should emulate especially if you actually need a father which every child mm -hmm. every female person mm -hmm. not even child every adult does i'm hoping that I, I'm, I'm not even hoping i'm guessing that she already has fatherly figures in her life mm -hmm. so then the absence of him 
it's not a, it's not a problem and then she can then even like make an extra friend but if you're if there are women out there who don't have any fatherly figure in their life this is not a good example i don't need to be friends with my dad i need a dad like not not a friend but like i said if she's getting she happiness said, yeah, um, like in uh, that sorry about that that um she has um she realizes limitations as a father so we don't know about this limitation but it's so limited that he can't even be a father he must be a friend yeah, no, we don't, it's we don't, weird we don't, we don't it's like okay, okay let me give an example if, like, if you say we're, we're dating and then i say you, you they, there's so much limitations with you that you can't even be a boyfriend you're you're a friend then you're not a boyfriend like you're so, in that department you're so useless the, that I can't even give you the title of being a boyfriend. I must put me, you in the friend think, department. I think um, I would just um, shout out to her friend because sometimes it's difficult for you to find someone who would look at the peculiarity of your situation, mm. understand it, and advise you based, based on, that. on that. It's different when we're having a conversation based on general. What is a father supposed to do? What is a mother supposed to do? What is a boyfriend supposed to do? But when we narrow it down to a conversation about a person and the other person. It's very important to understand the peculiarities of that relationship and advice based on that. I think that's what the friend has done and which is what you rightly said when you said that is because she's now an adult. I mean, she is an adult, right? You, I, I mean, 50. I can't even, I, I sat down to think about this story and I cannot begin to say this is exactly how a father should be to an older daughter, like what exactly do you want him to do? Which is what you as a person will have to define for yourself. But for her, I think she was expecting so much more that a friend had to call her back to say, you're an adult, right? Look at this man, look at his strengths, look at his weaknesses and understand that this is what he can do for you part time. And even when you're someone's father or someone's mother, mm -hmm. it's always been said that, it's said that it is very important that you're friends with them as well. So being friend doesn't mean that you've totally failed as a father or mm -hmm. as a person. And Ali Shakir rightly said that she just realized that she needed to get to know him more yeah. so that he can as well know her because they had no relationship they had to come together after a long time so it's important that you get to know this person and you she, he as well knows her and then find out what his weaknesses are what his strengths are and then take it up from there it cannot just be the same thing for everybody especially when there is a subject in question that's and how she's I not the first celebrity to connect to their fathers when they became adults we have the likes of drake who brought back his father we have kevin hartz who mm -hmm. brought back his father and you see well. those stories that yeah. i followed they actually brought back their fathers to be fathers the story the, what well, the story i read it isn't that she's trying to like develop a, a fatherly relationship with this person she said she had to evolve that and, mm. and for her that works maybe maybe i read that no, wrong. no 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 you're right but um you know in drake's case now drake still goes around singing about how his father was absent and now yeah. He, all of that but the father you can't change saying, that that, no, that would the, be there the for a long time saying that no that's it not was, true yeah. you're using that to make money yeah. you're using that just for music there's, there, there's that controversy that. So, that you know there's that controversy kevin Hart's case i don't think um it actually needs the fatherly figure he's just doing it because it's just cool to bury the hatchet especially the older you get the more you realize right. um a lot of things and the easier it is for you yeah. to forgive yeah i like that he said that which now brings the question what is a father actually supposed to do for an adult woman or an adult still man. This. Still, there, there are conversations where you want him to, you, you want what? to get his. Actually, when you are an Alicia Keys or you are a Kevin Hart, it goes way deep into conversations. And you cannot have that deep conversations and ad pick advice from what your father or your mother is going to tell you if you do not have a a, a base that base is some form of friendship and understanding so if that is where they are starting from except now, so, well, except except that was yeah because um if you, if you, okay imagine how alicia would feel now walking down the street of new york with her dad just have a nice yeah if the case is that she like, is starting from friendship alone. and she wants to evolve that into then having having a father relationship that's fine mm. what i read was i'm done with asking you to be a father let's just stick with friends let's just um i, I respect you respect me she even said it she was like, it to be a man and a woman relationship. Like, I'm friends with a man and I'm a woman. And you accept that I'm, and and then respect that. Mm. That was her word. So she's yeah. not trying to oh, I get what you are that. trying to dissect. But I'm also saying that when you have a grown woman 
that now have children, so you're making it seem like right? And then you are a man fathers? that is the father. At the end of the day, you have to begin to understand that. Now, I'm talking about the father now. A father has mm -hmm. to now begin to understand that this is a woman and I am a man. And I have to relate. Of course, not a woman and man in that sense. But, like, she's a grown woman that has her decisions to make. And, mm -hmm. and what we now have is conversations. It's, it's not necessarily the father and the daughter talk every time. Always if coming from me, here down. Me. It is a relationship and a I, th friendship. I still think adults need their but fathers. But I might be... Okay, to do what exactly? I, uh, that's like a no, completely different... No, I'm not saying you don't need your father. But you know. at some point, the relationship grows to becoming a conversation between two adults that learn from each other. But does that take away the fact that this is your father? No. It's still, he's still your father and she's still your mother. But a conversation has not got it to, it's just like a conversation you're having with your dad when you were say 16 or 14. It is not the same thing with what you have with I your feel dad. Like that's what I'm saying. I think if the father was present all their life, they would still have a fatherly relationship when okay. they're adults. Guess what? I think she's taking a step, a, a step in the right direction in the sense that yeah, by the time they become friends and he begins to value the friendship he would yeah. realize what he has missed all along and he would try to be a better dad okay so moving on to the next story for some of us it is the pressure we put on ourselves that push us to greatness and this is coming from fireboy dml mm. okay true that nobody can um teach you how to be great nobody can talk you into being great which is why all those motivational speakers and talk we said we don't want that in 2020 <laughs> anymore because at the end of the day it's your self-conviction -conv that really counts if you know that look if you're a go-getter you know that nobody can make you stop doing something especially when you're a grown person so when you're hungry for success you go for it and that's the only way you can get it. nobody can so it's that hunger that hunger for more that keeps you going. So I understand where Fireboy is coming from. Like. I mean, you can see it in his music. Like, he's steady trying mm -hmm. to, like, almost like he's trying to outbeat himself. Mm -hmm. After we had the conversation uh, on this table ages ago about not knowing who Fireboy was, you remember mm -hmm. that thing mm -hmm. of, like, we didn't know mm -hmm. his face and everything? I started yeah, to really, right. like, listen to him and, like, listen, try and identify his face. And his music, for me, it gave me, first of all, the Frank Ocean vibe where you couldn't actually tell what is influencing this person. He mm -hmm. seemed like a very... Um, That's the type of person. Almost like original. Like, he, this is coming from him. And that takes a lot of hard work to me, in my opinion. Um, so, somebody I'm beginning to learn how to respect and things. I would, however, say, though, that um, this, this, this is an, another example of when um, some strokes don't work for some folks. Because mm. this same pressure sometimes breaks people down. Mm. Um, and if it's not curbed, I don't know if it's based on your personality, the people that you're surrounded by, your environment, what's influencing you, or the reason why you want to put that pressure on yourself. Then this is long. But sometimes this same thing can be the same like thing that detriment that is detrimental to your mental health. But if it works for him and he's producing good music and you know it's in a healthy space and it's executed um, exactly. you know like with the balance, then I guess that, that works. We have to put that, that out that there. If the pressure is healthy and mm. um, it's um positive energy type of pressure than the school not comparing yourself to oh right. this person is doing this good, better than me this that that no, yeah man, which that is why matter. what i'm taking from what he's saying is the difference between the pressure that you put on yourself and the pressure that you get from other people which is what you just mentioned mm. now when you begin to compare yourself or mm. listen to what society says because we have a lot of oh you have to be this at this point you have to be that at this point but you as a person as an individual you know you want to be successful you know you want to move from this point to the next mm. point you have your timeline or your goal set out and you know what you want to do so it's important to feed yourself the right energy and motivate yourself from within to know that i have achieved this then i need to move to the next level but if you really have to wait for an external force to do that for you i think that is the one that can be detrimental to your health well, i know that internal um, um pressure as well especially when you are too hard on yourself so, which is why sometimes we tell you take it easy don't be too hard on yourself take it one step at a time but it is highly important for anybody regardless of what field you're in whether you're um, a creative or you're just working in a bank or whatever it is it's important for you to know that um you need to be better you, you need to be better than who you were yesterday so but you just mentioned one pressure already but yeah that's that enough you know pressure i tell people that, that the be biggest pressure yeah the biggest pressure i face or i go through is the pressure i give myself mm. i don't feel pressured by what people say or what people expect that i should be or i have become by now you but know you so just it's mentioned just about now that it has to come from within is it not are you saying it's impossible for someone to not have motivation from within but is getting it from somebody else like the people that are around them 
almost no, like no, stare them course. into I don't think it's I don't think it's possible for you not to have motivation for everything because even when you think you don't have it, when you think you're tapping it from someone, it comes yes, from within exactly, for you to even decide I that, that I am going to be better. So it has to come from within for you to no be better. No matter useful. what somebody tells you, if you're not willing then from you wouldn't, yeah, from right. within, you wouldn't do it. So even if it's a um, pressure you're getting or an advice you're getting from somebody around you, it still takes your self um, adjustment yeah. and conviction to say that, okay, I'm going to do what this, this person, person has, has said. All right, so that's how I wrap up this episode of Tea Time. Thank you for watching and join the conversation on social media with the hashtag Tea Time or tweet at us at Plus TV Africa. Remember, you can catch up on this episode and all our exclusive content by subscribing to our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa. You can also watch Tea Time on Out to TV and in London on Ben Television. My thank you as always to go to my co anchors, Ife Omai and Ife Oluwa Oshankaye, and the entire production team. Thank you for watching Plus TV Africa's Tea Time. My name is Elsie Godwin. Do stay home, stay safe, and and we'll see you later.